Hello, my name is Seth Cook, and my ceremonial speech is on the inventor and businessman Ole Kirk Christensen. Have you ever heard the expression quality over quantity? It basically promotes the idea of creating something that is of great value rather than many somethings of lesser value. This was something that Ole Kirk Christensen really held to heart. Who is Ole Kirk Christensen, you may ask? Well, he's only the most successfully unsuccessful businessman in the toy industry. Let me give you a good history on the man that created my favorite thing of all time, a tiny plastic brick. To start off, let's give, it, let's give a look into Ole Christensen's life. Ole was born on April 7th of 1891 in the country of Denmark. At age 25, he married his wife, Christine, and they had four children, Gottfried, Karl, Johannes, and Gerhard. Ole was a kind man who loved his family and loved his friends like family. He was always looking for new and innovative ways to cheer up everyone, and goodness knows they needed it because times were very hard back then. Ole was a carpenter, and a very fine one at that. There wasn't anything he couldn't make as long as he put his mind to it. But he was not a good businessman. His company nearly went bankrupt in 1932. He was forced to let go of all of his employees, and he was desperately looking for ways to stay in business. His wife, Christine, always told him to look on the bright side, and she was always there to comfort him. Except that not always, because she would unfortunately pass that same year. Ole was very depressed by this, but he chose to remember his wife's words and look on the bright side of things. He chose to... He wanted to brighten his son's moods, so he designed for them a wooden duck with wheels and a pull string so that they could drag it around. This was the first toy that Ole ever made, and it brightened his son's spirits so much, he decided that he would just go into business of making toys to brighten other children's days. And so, the dream was born. Ole was a very skilled man, and he made very simple toys with very extravagant details into them made out of wooden blocks. There was really nothing he couldn't do, and he was a firm believer in putting the best quality into everything he made. He still wasn't a very good businessman, though. He, he desperately needed help with that. So his oldest son, Gottfried, stepped in to give this help. He would stay behind after school, and he would run the numbers for his father and help him build the toys. This was how the business was started. Word got out of these wonderful toys that Ole Christensen and his son built, and a wholesaler came to purchase some of them. He wanted to buy a large shipment so that he could sell them in his store over the holidays, and Ole got immediately to work. He, um, he was even able to hire some of his old workers back to help him with this project because it was the biggest thing he'd ever done. Unfortunately, he got hit with some really terrible news halfway through the work. The wholesaler had filed for bankruptcy during this production and was not able to buy any more of the toys. So, Ole had a whole workshop full of toys and nothing to do with them. With nothing else to do, he decided he would be the one to sell them. He would go door to door selling these toys to whoever would buy them. He still wasn't a very good businessman, if you will recall, so he was not good at selling these things. He did manage to sell all of them by the end of the day, however, he didn't make very much money in the process. He was actually forced to trade most of these products for food and other things that he would need. It wasn't much, but he got by, and he decided that if he was really going to make this business get off the ground, he would need to give it a name, something to make it official. He wanted it to play off of the... F he wanted to convey the phrase, playing well which in Danish was Ligat. So he removed some of the letters and came up with the word Lego, and that was the design he went or that was the name he chose for the company, which unbeknownst to him actually translates in Latin to I built together. That is one of the greatest coincidences of all time because his company would later be involved in building. I will get to that soon. Staying in business was a little challenging for Ole, because in 1942, his workshop actually burnt to the ground, along with all of his designs and toys that were in progress. 
Rather than getting depressed, he remembered his wife's words and chose to rebuild this workshop from the ground up. He was always up for a challenge. In fact, in 1946, he went to a convention for toys and looking for a new challenge on how he could make other toys because the wood ones were good, but he just wanted to do something else. And this is when a plastic molding machine caught his eye. The machine was able to make tiny plastic bricks that stacked on top of each other to build things with, and he decided that he would buy this print. He would buy this printing machine, much to his son Godfrey's dismay. Godfrey had always believed that they could make more toys more effectively if they just used cheaper materials, but his father always disapproved of this, saying that only the best is worthy. Ole used this press to first make some baby rattles, but he realized that. The the little, pra the little bricks that he found at the convention just wouldn't get out of his mind. So he decided to print some of his own with his own unique design, making some that he would stack together into making a little house. This became the world's first ever Lego set. He then produced this set along with all the wooden toys, which were still the main focus of the company. And this was at the point when Gottfried saw these bricks' potentials. People liked the bricks because the children could put together the toy for themselves, but there wasn't much to do with it afterwards, which is why Godfrey came up with the new system where they would create things for the children to come up with on their own. The first set they actually made in this idea was a town set that came with multiple buildings, roads, and cars, so that the children could design the towns to be whatever they wanted, as well as teaching them valuable lessons like traffic and management. This was... Just what Ole would have wanted for a toy for the children, something that expanded their imaginations to allow them to be the creators of their world. And it was at this point that Gottfried finally understood what he meant when he said that only the best was worthy. These Lego bricks would become the greatest toy of all time, but sadly Ole would never see this greatness. He passed away in 1958 just as the brand was taking off nationwide. Were he still alive today, he would have taken very little pride in himself and great appreciation for those that helped him and Lego become what he could only dream of. In fact, that's what it really was, just a dream, one that an over-imaginative father came up with to help his sons. That dream was founded on the idea that Ole held dearly, that only the best is worthy. Thank you for your time.